morning. How are you today? If you are up and well, just wave your hand. God bless you. Today is the start of a new hour. It's called the daily savings time. And I almost forgot it's the daylight savings time today. But thank God we are all here and our spirits are high. And we are here to praise God for another day. God is good. And all the time. So let us be in worship. We welcome our brothers and sisters in Zoom, our guests and visitors, as well as our brothers and sisters and guests and visitors in this place. I'm sure that all of us are in one spirit. And let us be in that one spirit communing with God. Let us worship the Lord. Let us be between you and God, between us and God. And may we feel surely that the presence of the Lord is in this place. So let us sing our praise songs at this time. Oh, 
worship and bow down. Kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our Maker. For ye. Let us all pray. We are dry, Lord, like the pavement on a sweltering summer day. Our lives are heated, and the streams of our soul sometimes run dry. We catch our tears, but they cannot ease our thirst. We drip in sweat, but this cannot ease the heat. So we beg for only a few drops of refreshing rain to moisten the dryness in our world. Let's take some time for silent confession. God's promise is greater than rains or streams. God promises a Savior sent to redeem and fill us with water eternally. Living in the will of God, we live without thirst anymore. Amen. Let us remain standing for the gospel reading according to John chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. The words will be displayed on the screen. Please be seated. So when Jesus heard what was being said, he left Judea and went back to Galilee. On his way there, he had to go through Samaria. In Samaria, he came to a town named Sychar, which was not far from the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by the trip, sat down by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw some water. Give me a drink of water. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. So how can you ask me for a drink? Jews will not use the same cups and bowls that Samaritans use. If you only knew what God gives, and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him. 
and he would give you a life-giving water. Sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get that life-giving water? It was our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well. He and his children and his flocks all drank from it. You don't claim to be greater than Jacob, do you? Those who drink this water will get thirsty again. But those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring, which will provide them with life-giving water and give them eternal life. Sir, give me that water. Then I will never be thirsty again. Nor will I have to come here to draw water. Go and call your husband and come back. I don't have a husband. You are right when you say you don't have a husband. You have been married to five men, and the man you live with now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. I see you are a prophet, sir. My Samaritan ancestors worshipped God on this mountain. But you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where we should worship God. Believe me, woman. The time will come when people will not worship the Father either on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not really know whom you worship. But we Jews know whom we worship because it is from the Jews that salvation comes. But the time is coming. And is already here. When by the power of God's spirit, people will worship the Father as he really is. Offering him the true worship that he wants. God is spirit. And only by the power of his spirit can people worship him as he really is. I know that the Messiah will come. And when he comes, he will tell us everything. I am he. I who am talking with you. At that moment, Jesus' disciples returned, and they were greatly surprised to find him talking with a woman. But none of them said to her, what do you want? Or asked him, why are you talking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the town. Come and see the man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he be the Messiah? May the Lord bless us upon the hearing of his word. Let us all sing.
Praise the Lord for that wonderful message of the song. God bless you, dear members of the choir. May our ministry flourish and through you. God will change people's heart and may they say as well, give me a servant's heart. So, amen for that. I want to share some thoughts regarding today's scripture reading. And this is about the Samaritan woman. And uh, looking at this, I do pray that may we follow Christ as we uh, break down the walls, the barriers, and not us be the one to build them, nor to add them. There's a colleague of mine was eating with a parishioner in the food court, in a mall for sure, as they were eating and talking, their focus was focused to two teenagers, a girl and a boy, who were seating themselves, you know, on a table nearby. And what caught their uh, attention was the way these two teenagers looked. Uh, the boy was wearing those, you know, the the pants, the droopy pants, the one that is loose and it's always hanging and sometimes with a chain on it. And then uh, they were both dressed in black. They had piercings mm. in their noses. I don't know if you have come across this kind of, uh, especially particularly young people. I don't know if in your workplaces you can see one or two. And uh, their lips are, you know, uh, are pierced as well as their eyebrows. So here, here's the comment. No, I think they were, they were goth. What do you mean by goth? Yeah, sometimes you, know, you feel like they're out of this world, you know, some kind of a crazy guys. So as they watched them, they began to classify them, you know, and got some of those impressions uh, talking about them and put them into a certain category, a category that builds, you know, barrier between these people and he was judging them. Then they were caught in surprise when these two, uh, these two teenagers, the boy and the girl, joined hands, bowed their heads, and gave thanks to God for the food they were about to partake. Not ashamed of what the people would, would say on them. And they are in a crowd. They are there in the open, and they were not ashamed to pray, bow their heads, and thank God. You know, the classification or uh, the labeling of people is most definitely, you know, something that uh, we are into. Instead of getting to know others, we judge them quickly. We allow our impressions first time to destroy or ruin the, the chance to break down, you know, the, the barriers of misunderstanding between people or persons that cause hate that cause pride or violence or prejudice. In verse four, 
In our reading today, right before our gospel lesson for this morning, we are told that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Jesus could have avoided Samaria, you know. And many Jews were able to easily avoid that place by crossing the Jordan and traveling on the east side. They don't want to meet Samaritans and for a Jew. That, that's a no-no. But Jesus had to go through Samaria. Why? Could it be that Jesus had to go through Samaria because there was a harvest there? Something good that will gonna happen? Could it be that even in Samaria, who, uh, which is considered ungodly, so secular, that there are people of worth, sacred worth, people who God loves, who are ready to be transformed by Christ. This person is good. This person is bad. This person is not the right race. This person is too dirty, too ugly, too poor. Whatever it is, Jesus did not see people that way. And I hope, uh, and I hope so to us. He was just speaking to a rich young ruler as he was speaking to a leper and even an outcast. Any person in, on the outskirts of society, he is not great, he's not building or making walls to divide. Jesus reach out to all and make bridges of love and friendship as he brought the message of God to our world. And even Jesus loves the little children as we do. Look at one of us here. That boy, I love that boy. Even if he roams around, I don't care because he's here. He's loved by God. And he is among people who would love to see wonderful things at his age in the sight of God and in this place. When we read the Gospels, we find that Jesus was constantly in conflict with the religious authorities of his day because he associated himself with the wrong people. He is the one breaking the Sabbath and he is challenging the, the laws at that time, uh, the Hebrew law. law. And spoke against the practices of those who are on the temple, the priests, the scribes, and other religious leaders. And what did they do, do to him? He paid a great price. And they killed him. There was a conversation with a group of pastors not so long ago, when one person in the group made a comment and said, if Jesus were to come to earth right now, in 2020, like he did 2000 years ago, or 2023, he would be put to death again. Then a person, 
pose a question. But who would it be that would put him to death? Who will put him to death? And one pastor responded, probably the leaders of the Christian church. They would not approve of the kinds of people Jesus accept into God's kingdom. And Jesus would not approve of the way we shut the doors of the kingdom of God in so many persons' faces. Today's scripture reason, uh, lesson, brothers and sisters, is a perfect example of how Jesus transformed the standards of the world. Break down the barriers and challenges the status quo of this world. The Jews of Jesus, they hated Samaritans. The Samaritans were the descendants of the lost tribes, the 10 lost tribes of kingdom of Israel. That's what, according to the, my research, who had been overrun and conquered, conquered by the Assyrians 700 years before Christ. It was a big N-O, no, for a Jew to have anything to do with a Samaritan. And yet, Jesus went through Samaria. In Christ's day, you know, there was a, 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 a debate whether or not Samaritan women got souls. And it has only been real, uh, recent that our society is beginning to accept women as co-equal of men. Last Friday, we were dealing with, uh, you know, in our Bible study, and it was a Bible study that we are uh, we're so in, enthused with. I invite all of you, brothers and sisters, if, uh, Friday at seven o'clock, we have Bible study and, and uh, we are grateful that Pastor June is there willingly and graciously sacrificing his time. And we appreciate that very much uh, for us to come together. You know what, uh, Pastor June says, I'm not only, I'm not only teaching you this, these things, but for me, I am learning from what I, I teach. I am teaching myself as well. And I would like to invite us all uh, to have this time together to read more and understand the words of God and for us to pray for one another as well. And this is very important as a faith community, a community of faith that prays together, grows beyond measure. If you see me here preaching, don't think that this is for you only. This preaching is for me also. For all of us here, I am not ex uh, excluding myself, but for me and you together, praying that we will be transformed by the renewing spirit of God, that through the Holy Spirit made these things possible. So it is possible to break the barriers it was Christ who saw these possibilities, who uncovered the, the values of the world, of the standards of the world. Jesus Christ was the first one to break down these barriers. And as Christians, we are called as Christ's body on this earth to break down anything that hampers the growth and the integrity of a human being for the sake of the gospel. 
We are called to stop shaping life according to the standards of our friends, standard of the community, or the standard of the society. For what is acceptable or not, comfortable or not, and to express our openness to those who are different. We need to be the ad advocates of truth, of what Jesus is teaching. And we need to encounter Samaritans, quote unquote, in our times today. Those who are unlovable, those we think they are lower than our than our standards, the ones that we feel that they are not like us. These are the encounters that need to be met because they long for what Jesus offers, the love that has never been uh, received. We are called to stop shaping life according to the standards of this world. Are we doing this? And if so, how are we doing this? Of how, or how well are we doing this? The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, told us that there is no Christianity without social justice. And yet look at how little social justice there, there is in our world today. Thank God we have here in, in this place, in the Bay Area where we live. It's not the issue of social justice that we need. We need more of you. We need people to get involved so that this will prosper and people will be in a better uh, look of life. They will be in a different situation, different in the sense that it is a better, it's a well-lived kind of life. And it's not going to happen until we together involve ourselves. You know, brothers and sisters, it's always, it says in the, in the Bible, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Don't expect and don't depend too much with what we have now, the pastor and the leaders. But we need each one of you. I know that your heart beats for others as well. Your love goes beyond yourself. And this is what we need, that each one of us come together, holding hands, lifting each other up, praying for one another, and, and uh, marching on to making these ministries that we have happen. And we, are, we praise God. We, are doing, we have those ministries. We have this food pantry. What a joy, praise be to God. And thank you for, uh, for your participation. Thank you for your concern. But let us, all, uh, let us invite more people doing things like this. Uh, and also we have the San Francisco Food Night Ministry. And we are we are grateful that it is ongoing and we are making people's lives better. And this is all every other Thursday. And here's a new thing that we are doing that every first Saturday of the month we are doing again lunches. Another 200 lunches to feed. And you don't know how much it, me it, uh, it meant for those who are hungry. Try not to eat one day and, and think, how does it feel? In other countries, there are 
people who are scarcely eating their their meals and there are i i heard that one particular place that you know uh they they make schedule meals in the family somebody will eat today and tomorrow in uh, nothing in order to have uh, everyone in the family eaten so this kind of a scenario situations that we need to think of we are privileged and we are blessed to have all these opportunities of having uh, receive these blessings we need to impart to others and only when we have that love of christ that it is made possible and it is making uh, a possible uh, experience as we continue to do this here in our place so brothers and sisters what is our response for those people who are in need There are people who are thirsty. Here is a bad, this, uh, th here is a woman, Samaritan woman with a bad reputation. He's not popular in, his, in her town. And the other women had intentionally don't like her. And she, in order to feel at peace at her situation she decided to go to the well in that appointed time so that nobody can see her so that she they will not be making troubles to to her and there was at the well but then here is Christ who took the first step. He, op he, is he was the one who opened his mouth and started the conversation that would not only change her life, but also the lives of the many in town. And in, it was told in our reading that many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. God's grace knows no bounds. Jesus went through Samaria even though it would have been easier to avoid it. But he went through that town. My dear brothers and sisters, what places are we called to go through? Although we could easily avoid them, how we might be able to bring the gospel the gospel of love of hope gospel of peace gospel of forgiveness the gospel of breaking down the barriers and accepting people in spite of their limitations and not labeling them and we have to go through samaria in our lives to go to the places Christ would go. Speak to the, the people Christ would speak to. Love the people Christ loves. Even if no one else loves them. We are called to be Christ to this world. No matter what the situation is. We are called to break down the barriers we're here no matter what the race are no matter what class they are into even if they have mental you know issues or lack of abilities no matter how sinful we 
perceive them that I am better than they are. And in doing so, we will truly be living what we pray. And I know that we know this prayer, the Lord's prayer. And we can say that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Brothers and sisters, let's look around and see if there are spots of Samaria that we need to go through and pray that may, the, may others be brought in and part of God's family. God bless us all. Amen. God gives of God's self freely, so let us give freely to God. Let us bring gifts that sustain the life of the kingdom. May these resources be more than enough. Ushers, please come. Hello. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? Tell me, Lord. What did I ever do that was worth loving you or the kindness you shown? Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus. I know what I am, but now that I know that I've needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Try me, Lord, if you think there's a way. I can try to repay all I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been through myself on my way back to you. Lord, help me, Jesus, I've wasted it, so help me, Jesus, I know what I am. But now that I know that I've needed you, so help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hand Lord help me Jesus I've wasted it so help me Jesus I know what I am but now that I know that I've needed you so help me Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Jesus, my soul's in your hand. Thank you. Thank you.
Let us all rise. To God be the glory. God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things He has done. With Let's all pray the prayer of dedication. God, our provider, in Christ you give us a spring of pure water that overflows to eternal life. Your love and hope fill our hearts, so we want to worship you in spirit and truth. Open our eyes to see the places in this neighborhood where our church ministries could reach new people. Direct our gifts and offerings for your purposes so that our community will become like a field ripe for harvest. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated at uh, this time. And let's go into the time together for our joys and concerns. I know we have all loads to carry, but again, may this be a time for us to be uh, refreshed, renewed, transformed. And uh, I'd like to ask again if Pastor uh, June is uh, around. Uh, I'm here, Pastor Alex. Oh, thank you. And right there. And let's ask uh, Pastor June to lead us in our uh, time together. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can see me. I'm sorry I could not be there. I last night and in, and today when I woke up, I started having cold symptoms. So I decided to just stay home and uh, join our worship service via Zoom. So we're still, I'm still grateful that I could be with you today, everyone. So good morning. Welcome to our Grace United Methodist Church worship service. And God is good. All the time. Yes. So it's time for us to share our gratitudes and our blessings, those in the sanctuary and those uh, on the Zoom. Please feel free to share how God has blessed you and and God how God has touched your lives this past week and, of course, uh, your prayer requests and concerns so we could uh, pray uh, for them. Anyone? Pastor uh, Pam is uh, raising her hand. Yes, please. Uh, if you could use the microphone so I could hear you. I just want to say thank you uh, to God. Today is my mom's birthday, and I'm just one. Just many more blessings of good health and and love and happiness for her. Yes, happy birthday, Po. Thank you for sharing that uh, blessing and uh, and Thanksgiving, Pam. So, uh, of course, we offer our uh, birthday greetings to your mom. Thank you for sharing. Any anyone else? Uh. Ati Nora is here, Pastor. Okay, God is good all the time, as we say. And the prayer, I always say prayer works, really. And we praise and thank God because uh, last Wednesday, my Ama started to, you know, I shared it with the prayer group. And praise God that it's, uh, you know, over with. Thank you, Lord. And I also want to praise and thank God because uh, this week, you know, there was like almost... I uh, got into an uh, accident, like uh, bumping, someone bumped into me and I bumped into something. But, you know, praise be to God, there's no, nobody got hurt and 
the car is fine and the other car is fine too. So really, I, uh, in the morning, I always say, be, be with us, be, be, be our uh, guide us and uh, for us to be safe. And uh, God really answer prayer. And I thank God for that. Thank you and praise. Oh my goodness, thank you, Atinora, for sharing those blessings, healing for Ama and for God's protection over you. And uh, we are grateful in the, indeed that uh, the accident was not serious. So praise God for that. God is good. Any other blessings, celebrations? Pastor, I just want to praise yes. God for uh, the presence of our youth and young adult. As we all see now, we have Kelly who is doing the lit our liturgy today. And because uh, he is now very close to us, workplace is, I think he is uh, working the same, uh, same hospital that you are into, Pastor. So uh, because of that, now distance is... Uh, very friendly and uh, now he is here with us and I'm looking forward to him you know uh, swinging his arms on the drums uh, later on so Kelly thank you very much uh, brother God bless you and uh, and also secondly uh, we, are, we praise God for the board of trustees for they are now responding uh, quickly into the need of the fence in the 43rd Avenue and uh, and uh, through the leadings of uh, Brother Rod and Sister Lillian. And we are so grateful that uh, it's ongoing. And I think uh, there is a, uh, an announcement from uh, Brother Rod. Uh, Brother Rod, what's that? Please bear with us, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, this Saturday, whoever is available to come and join us uh, to uh, work on the fence. Uh, we started buying materials already, so me and Vic are available on Saturday. So if you are available, just please contact Pastor uh, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Jim. Thank you, brother. Thank you for that. Uh... For those announcements, Pastor Alex, indeed, we are grateful for our youth and young adults for their participation in the life of our church and uh, and for their leadership as well. And of course, for our board of trustees, we are grateful to God for them as well. And and of course, to, for uh, Brother Rod and, uh, and Lillian for their leadership. And please, if you have a free time on Saturday, please uh, come to uh, to the parsonage. Uh, to help with uh, the work of the fence there. And we need you. And this is, uh, this is what Pastor Alex has been saying in his sermon, that we, we need to break barriers by, by serving our Lord and by serving our church and being involved in the work of our church and, and in our ministry. So thank you. Any other concerns, blessings, celebrations? Atinita, could you please unmute yourself? Paki unmute niyo po yung sarili niyo. We cannot still hear you po. Atinita, you're trying to say something. Perhaps somebody could ask her to unmute. Can't hear her. Anything else? Anyone else? Atinita, I think we can hear you now, Po. You can hear me now? Yes. I just uh, want to thank God for the safe travel of my son Maynard coming from the Philippines. Oh. Thank God indeed for traveling mercies upon Maynard and and bringing Maynard back home here safely uh, to the U.S. All right. Thank you for sharing that blessing, Po Ati Anita. 
Anything else before we conclude our prayers with a prayer as a faith community? All right, shall we come to the Lord now and, and conclude with a prayer? And so I invite us now to, to be uh, in unity uh, as we offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you again for this wonderful time of being together so that we could be renewed, we could be refreshed, not only as individual believers, but as a faith community through our worship service today. We thank you for all the blessings and gifts that you have given us, especially those who have shared their, their blessings that they have received today. Uh, we are grateful for the birthday of uh, Ati Mila. We are grateful for the gift of life you've given her this past year. We are grateful for the gift of health and love that she has received from family and friends. We pray that you continue to bless Ati Mila as she faces her coming new year in her life, that you continue to journey with her and keep her in your love and care and sustain her with your abundant grace every day. We offer these prayers to those others who have celebrated their birthdays and, and special anniversaries or celebrations in their lives that we failed to mention. You know them, oh God, and so we pray for them as well. We thank you for your gift of protection, uh, your traveling mercies that you've given to Maynard and to Atinora, uh, who were uh, for Atinora especially, and, and, and those who were with her, uh, that you spared them from a serious accident. Lord, we are grateful for your protection and your presence in their lives. Thank you for uh, saving them uh, from all harm. So oh God, indeed, we are grateful. Uh, we are grateful, too, for uh, our Board of Trustees, uh, for the leadership of Brother Rod and Sister Lillian. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless our Board of Trustees, continue to uh, challenge us as well to be, um, uh, to be involved in the in maintenance of our properties, in taking care of our facilities, and uh, we uh, hope that on Saturday we will be able to to join together in in, uh, in uh, putting a new fence in our parsonage, oh God. And so we pray that you uh, continue to speak to us. We thank you for our youth and young adults, for their leadership, for their witnesses, and for their lives, oh God. We pray that you continue to challenge them and 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 inspire them to get involved more and, and especially to grow in their faith as well as in their relationship with you, oh God. And so as we offer these prayers to you, Lord, we continue to pray for one another, for each family represented in our worship service today. Again, we pray that you continue to dwell in our homes, be a part of our plans as families, be a part of our relationships, and that may you continue to uh, be involved in our lives as families, oh God, that as you dwell in our homes, please dwell in our hearts as well. And we pray for also for those victims of the natural calamities uh, around us. We pray for victims of the flooding that is in South, uh, that's happening now in Southern California, those who are stranded in their homes because of snow, those who are uh, victims of wars uh, in 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 uh, countries like uh, like Ukraine, those who are victims of uh, of uh, of pain and suffering, of poverty, Lord, we offer our prayers for all these people, and we pray that governments in these countries will be able to provide help and support to these families, O oh God, and may your 
divine presence, your light and your love uh, be in these places of darkness, these places of discouragement, in these places of pain and suffering, O oh God. And again, challenge us to, re to be able to reach out in these places through our prayers as well as through our uh, acts of compassion and love. We pray for those among us who are anxious, those who are worried about life circumstances, those who are feeling alone and isolated, those who are experiencing food and home insecurities, those who are feeling ill and sick. Lord, we pray that you please be with these, your children, and help them experience your gift of peace and comfort and healing of body, mind, and spirit, O oh God. And as we offer these prayers to you, Lord, teach us to be loving and compassionate, and that through us, the evils and barriers of, of prejudice and hatred and racism are overcome and, and broken. Make us your instruments of bringing your kingdom in the world today, in bringing the values of your kingdom of peace and joy and love and justice and equality and help us to, to break down our own prejudices and biases against each other. And that may we truly be your instruments of love and compassion to everyone. And so, Lord, we offer our lives to you now. We offer our everything about us to you now. And thank you for listening to us once again. And as we conclude this prayer, I invite each one of us now to have a moment of silence as you offer your personal prayers, your personal concerns to the Lord at this time. We ask all this in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together as we pray the Lord's Prayer with reflective hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Jim, for ministering to us uh, at this time of need, concerns. And, uh, and we are also here to let you know that we are praying for your recovery, that sooner you're going to be walking uh, straight and without any uh, trouble. May God make you well. For our closing song, let's all rise if you are able and let us sing still. I'd like to ask uh, the praise band, praise group to come and lead us in this song.
Yes, Lord, we have heard you today in our prayers, in our worship, praising your name. And we see our lives, Lord, only when you are welcome, when we receive you as our God, that our lives are changed, transformed. Just like the Samaritan woman, Lord, thank you that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the world. A world filled with sin, limitations, darkness. Thank you, Lord, that this world, a world of hatred, 
a world of violence, a world of indifference, we have you. Just as you have saved the, the Samaritan woman, Lord, we know that we have a space in your heart. And so we can sing when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. You are our King, O oh God. And only when we keep ourselves still, be still, be still, and know you as our God, and that we can find rest in our soul, that in you alone, so your power that we can find hope and peace and we entrust to your lives thank you for this time that we can be together holding our lives clinging to you that we know we wait patiently we trust you all the time we can see a new morning a morning that is filled with love. A new morning that we can meet you. Lord, thank you for this time. Brothers and sisters, as you depart this space, remember that God who calls water to flow from a rock is the same God who walks with you. Go forth with the assurance that in the midst of a chaotic word, world something good can happen something good will happen amen Let us now pass the peace of Christ with each other. Thank you for coming. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace, everyone. Stay dry, stay warm, and stay healthy and well. Peace be with you. With you have a blessed Sunday. Yes. Blessed week, everyone. Yes. Hi, Joyce. Mari Carr. God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ati Pritchi. Ati Nita. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Take care. God bless you all. Bye bye. Yes. Bye. God bless everyone. Everyone. So I I don't know.